And now we are moving from smart cities to circular economy. I guess it's not really far. No, that's very close. Yeah. We're not talking about cities really, but it's, uh, it's happening within the cities. Exactly. So um, I have with me on stage uh, Anna Söderholm. You're the acting CEO for IVL. Can you give a short introduction to yourself, please? Yes, uh, my name is Anna and I've been working at IVL for a long time, but I'm also been working with sustainability for more than 30 years. So uh, it's quite a lot of years, actually. So, and IVL has been working since more than 50 years with sustainability issues. And we are a research institute and we were actually founded really to solve the environmental problems for the business sector. Because at that time, there was more a fight between the authorities and the business sector. And there was more all oh, legislation and everything. Uh, but uh, we were founded really to find the creative solutions to, uh, to solve the environmental problems in an innovative way, way. And that's actually what we're doing also now. And uh, we work with three different parts. We want to achieve the sustainable society, but uh, working with scientific solutions uh, in reality, so really implement it in reality, not mm. just doing research and do a report. And the other thing is actually, it can f sound a bit uh, like a cliche, but finding the environmental problems to see it as a solution, the possibilities to find the really how can we gain from the environmental problems to find business solutions. And the third part actually is how can we turn the linear processes that we have in society into circular economy? And it's not just the industry that needs to be circular, it's also actually the legislation. Because today, all legislation is about the linear process. It start with raw material extraction and end when we consumers have used these products and put it into a landfill. So we really need to close these loops, uh, both in the policy sector, but also in technology. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back shortly to the whole um, textile yeah. problem and the textile barrier, as uh, we heard, we had textile. one of uh, journalists ask this question today. Yeah. Barrier means like it's a mountain of textile that's being dumped. Um, and, and mostly dumped into, into countries which, where it should not be dumped because, uh, I mean, that, so that whole process. But we'll get back to that uh, uh, very shortly. I'd like to also introduce uh, two other speakers who are joining us. Um, Puneet Arora, uh, you are sitting in India and you're the senior business developer for IKEA Textile, representing IKEA in Asia. Uh, or South Asia. Um, Puneet, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the work you're doing um, with IKEA? Certainly, Sanju. Thank you. Uh, uh, hello to you. Hello, Anna and Bjorn, uh, fellow delegates uh, and uh, respected audience. Uh, I'm Puneet Aroda, uh, responsible senior business developer for uh, a textile products business based out of IKEA South Asia. Uh, additionally, uh, I'm also responsible for leading the uh, circular transition that we are making for our uh, textile business globally at IKEA. Uh, so that's what I do. You can call me a sustainability enthusiast. Uh, and uh, I'm really happy to uh, get to live my passion every day at IKEA. Uh, so looking forward to the discussion. Thank you for having me here. Okay, thank you, Puneet. And um, last but not least, I would love to welcome Bjorn Bedin. I see, Bjorn, you have this um, background picture, I guess, is that in Domsjö, in, in the <laughs> northern part of, of Sweden. And you, you uh, represent Aditya Birla. And this is um, probably one of India's largest investments in Sweden, is the Domsjö Fabriker from, from India. Um, Bjorn, can you tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing and, and what is that happening behind you there? So, uh, first I'd like to introduce myself. So, Bjorn Vedin, uh, CEO of Domsjö Fabrik. Uh, so, we have, uh, what you see behind me here is, uh, is uh, what we call a biorefinery. Uh, and uh, we have three products. Uh, 
And that's uh, dissolving cellulose, lignin, and uh, bioethanol, and uh, they are produced out of wood. Uh, we are uh, probably, I would say, the most circular biorefinery in the world, uh, and uh, we are. We have been for a very, very long time uh, striving for circularity and uh, sustainability. And uh, that is a normal kind of work for us, I, I would say. So so what you see behind here is, is our part of our mill and our company. And we are, as you said, part of Aditya Birla Group only, uh, or the part of our Dita Vila group here in Sweden. Thank you. Thank you, Bjorn. I think it's interesting because you also, um, cellulose or as a fabric is, is considered to be more sustainable than many other fabrics. And we'll just get back into, into the problems of, <laughs> of fabrics and what happens to fabrics. But uh, Anna, I want to first um, come back to you and ask you a couple of questions. The first is about um, what are the primary environmental and, of course, the economic benefits of closing the loop uh, within various industries? And, and how does it um, contribute to resource efficiency and waste reduction? And the second question, which I also have, I'm putting it together, um, and, and of course you can take your time to answer both, uh, is that what, textile waste, because this is a significant issue. Uh, it's being discussed all around the world. Uh, it's part of, I think, I, I don't know exactly the figures, but it's a huge contribution in terms of everything that's wrong for the planet and what's going wrong. Um, so how can circular economy from a principal perspective, from recycling, from upcycling, um, help reduce uh, both waste? And, and what are the solutions out there and how can they be scaled? Because at the end, it's great that there is solution, but can it be scaled? Can, can we really make a difference? Or are we going to be st stuck with this big pile of uh, textile uh, that we're seeing in and around the world? I think we should not be stuck with that big uh, mountain of textiles. So, I mean, in EU, just between 2015 and 2020, uh, we doubled the production of textiles used within the Union. And each one of us are throwing away 11 kilos of textiles per person a year, but we buy 27, so we accumulate a lot in our wardrobes. Uh, so, still these 11 kilos, uh, will, there will be a ban of uh, throwing it into the waste 2025. So, uh, there will be a lot of investments uh, for new innovations to really collect and uh, reuse these textiles. So, there is a lot of things going to happen in the textile uh, value chain. Uh, so. But I mean, the problem is created, I think, mainly because of the fast fashion way how we are, we are buying new clothes and everything. Uh, of course, we're also using it in, in, in furniture, as uh, um, IKEA is doing. But uh, so many of the solutions are very high up in the value chain. It's already on the design stage, I would say. But still, we have these huge waste problems that we really need to start to, to work with. And uh, uh, some years ago, uh, I think it was around 2015, we took an initiative with a Vinova-founded uh, mission-driven project. Uh, because we saw that there is a lot of happening where you can... Um, recycle the fibers. So a lot of in innovation and, and there are really interesting innovations here in Sweden uh, for how to reuse the fibers. Uh, but there was a missing link and that was the sorting because there's a huge mountain as you say. And, and today all the recycling of textiles is done manually. And uh, that is not very industrialized and it's not very efficient. So what we did was that we brought together 21 different partners here in Sweden to work together with a solution how to sort textiles 
uh, industrialized with uh, very advanced um, sensor technology. Uh, so, and, and this equipment now is um, uh, built in Malmö. Mm -hmm. So it's a municipality-owned uh, company, Sysav, who actually uh, did the investment, because you need to find someone doing the investment. Mm. And it's a large-scale sorting machine. Uh, it can sort 4.5 tons of textiles every hour. And I think for Sweden, let's see, I think we produce 140,000 ton uh, a year uh, of uh, textile waste. So there is a lot of these machines that is needed. Mm. In every town? Yeah. And village? Yeah, and, and in, cities. In, in all cities. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think we should really see these uh, textile waste as a resource. That is what, about closing the loop. So it doesn't help that now EU will, will ban uh, us just throwing it into the waste. There is also need to be some in incentives to use it uh, as a resource. Mm. Uh, I can come back. Maybe we can hear, hear a little bit more from, from our... Uh, uh, other. Definitely. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll head over to you, uh, Puneet, and... and um, it'll be interesting to understand from you if recycling is a crucial component in the circular economy. So how can we improve recycling rates and the quality of recycled materials to ensure they can be reintegrated into the production process effectively? And the other question which I have is connected more with um, circular economy models and in terms of how do you involve um, extended producer responsibility and, and you know f how can you really bring together the textile industries and the policy makers to work to m uh, together to promote responsible product design, manufacturing and end of life management of textiles. So that, that maybe is the second question you can get back to me a little bit later but it, that's more to do with of course how IKEA is working um, but the first part will be also interesting to hear from a technical perspective. Absolutely, Sanjay. Thank you uh, for these very good questions. And now you have asked me too. Uh, let me let me take you a little bit uh, to uh, you know how what we have set ourselves to at IKEA. Uh, you know uh, we have an ambition to be uh, climate positive uh, by 2030. Uh, and to do this, uh, we have actually put circularity at the center. How we how we do that? We have uh, identified three key directions that we believe will take us forward uh, to this goal to be climate positive. Uh, we call these three roads or directions uh, uh, as sustainability, uh, accessibility, uh, and affordability for the many customers that we serve. Uh, let me talk briefly about uh, these three uh, directions, and I think it will get to the answer that you're looking for uh, for the first question. Uh, first, talking about sustainability, you know, uh, we realized quite early uh, within our organization that uh, material would be the biggest footprint that we'll have to solve uh, if we have to be climate positive. Uh, with the consumption trends that Anna just cited, uh, you can very well imagine where we are up to. Uh, and to do that, uh, we, we started, you know, being a production-oriented retailer, having an end-to-end -end approach. Uh, it was to our advantage to have a closer look uh, and look at all the actors in our whole value chain, right? Uh, from the design phase, how do we design for the feedstock or the waste recycle materials that are that we have access to, up until manufacturing, and then going back to our supplier partners. And how do we do that? How do we make all this accessible? You know, that is where the second direction of accessibility comes into play. Uh, you know, Sanjay at IKEA, we are we are really obsessed with uh, finding better solutions uh, for our many customers. And uh, that is where we see that clean waste would be, I mean, it is equivalent to pure gold uh, today. Uh, these recycled materials will be the raw materials that we work with in the very near future. So we have, in, in the since past two to three years, we have heavily invested into knowledge building uh, of these raw materials, what these can blend into uh, to find better solutions uh, for our uh, customers. Uh, how do we scale this knowledge up until our uh, many supplier partners, you know, being a production-oriented retailer, that is where 
we see at the shop floor, the whole magic happens. So we have now a good knowledge base. We have built models to work with recycled materials and, and we have scaled up uh, to find solutions in the form of uh, products that we are selling today in our uh, many stores globally. All this doesn't stop here, you know. Uh, the third direction that I'm talking about, which is affordability, that I believe is the most important to make this whole effort that we are talking about on circularity to be more democratic and widespread use. Uh, this this cannot be, uh, you know, only for a handful of people. Uh, we have to make sustainability really affordable for them many. Uh, and we are proud to say that the way we are approaching uh, circularity at IKEA uh, our, our customers do not have to pay premium in the name of sustainability. Uh, rather, it is part of the inbuilt offer that we have for them. Uh, let me illustrate this with a very small, uh, you know, uh, I'll, I'll just take a minute to share an example. Now, we have this curtain in the range in the name of Lenta, Lenta curtain. We are selling this since 1992. Uh, you'll be happily surprised that today, improving this product, making it more circular, we have made this product with 40% recycled cotton. Uh, we are using 33% less energy, 30% water savings. And to, to get all this, our customers are paying a lower price than they were paying for a normal curtain uh, with 100% virgin cotton curtain. So this is just one of the many ways in which we are making sustainability affordable. And there are similar movements happening in other materials like recycled polyester or plastic. Uh, so I'm I'm really happy with uh, the way we are going. Uh, summarizing again, these three directions, sustainability, accessibility, and affordability. Uh, these uh, uh, are the key directions which uh, are taking us uh, towards being uh, climate positive. And I'm really happy to be a part of this effort. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Puneet. And I think what you, uh, we'll come back to this if we have some time, is also talk about that it all starts with the design, you know, because uh, that's a critical thing. I think one of the biggest challenges with the textile recycling is if, the, if your textile has many different types of fabrics, even if you're sorting, it's going to become a really like a hell to imagine taking out those fibers that have been entwined into those other fibers. I mean, just to, just to explain the, a very simple recycling or upcycling process, I mean, that's not an easy process. So uh, whatever is designed today has to be designed with this in mind that everything has to be upcycled or recycled. And, and that is almost a, a story of yesterday, not today anymore, you know. Um, today we need to talk about um, using also uh, materials and, and, and fabrics that are sustainable from the beginning. And that brings us to you, Bjorn. I mean, you're working with sure. cellulose, you're working with, um, uh, uh, with bringing you know, a fabric that's already um, uh, ready for, uh, uh, as, a, as a sustainable product. And, and, uh, but Bjorn, um, of course, you can uh, tell us a little bit about that, but many industries face supply chain challenges when transitioning to circularity? And how can companies work with suppliers to source sustainable material and promote cir circular practices throughout the value chain? And I think as, as an expert from your background, I, it, could, it would be also interesting to see like the role that you, I mean, how are you incorporating technology to solve this in terms of whether it's IoT or blockchain or in tracking and tracing materials within a closed loop systems and, and how does that sort of support transparency and accountability? Uh, can you share some of your insights from, from your industry? Yeah, first, uh, I mean, also from, from Virla Cellulose, we, 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 we would like to be net zero. Our goal is to be net zero by 2040 and uh, reduce our uh, greenhouse gases by 50 percent uh, by 2030. And uh, if you look at circularity and and uh, supply chain, I mean, uh, it all goes back to, I mean, responsible manufacturing. You have to look at yourself first always uh, and. Uh, for us, it's, it's talked about closed loop processes, uh, then uh, follow certain standards, of course, uh, 
uh, all all of them. But then if you look in, in, in EU, we have the BAT standards. Uh, but for 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 us, it's very important outside also in in India to follow the BAT and to be 100% BAT compliant. If I then go into uh, circular or responsible manufacturing in in uh, for us, for example, is that uh, as I said, closed loop manufacturing is important, and to do a, to go through our, our own business first of all, but then uh, to implement the circular supply chain with suppliers is is also very special to see to go through and to assess uh, assess all our suppliers within the circularity and have those circularity glasses on the sustainable glasses on and for example we our our i mean we are producing uh, 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 sustainable products from sustainable raw material and then we have to look at the for example wood is our our main raw material so to have a discussion and and talk to our to our wood suppliers go through the 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 sustainability see that we are getting uh, certified wood for example uh, and and then be out in place also and assess the supplier by themselves regarding uh, sustainability work together with them that's that's extremely important uh, then if you look at uh, you you said the blockchain and and what kind of rule it plays uh, the technology helps us to 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 get to get traceability how that works and and to get full traceability the whole way from the the final product down to to the all the raw materials uh, makes it a lot easier to to see the where 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 all the things has happened, but also to see where it comes from. Uh, extremely important to that also that uh, that enables the creation of, uh, of 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 records and transactions uh, and and real time tracking and tracing of goods throughout the whole supply chain. Uh, you you need to have this uh, traceability also, and it's important for for our customers to see where where things are coming from. And for us, that are circular, is also important to show to be able to show in real time how, how it looks like. Mm. Yeah. Yes, Anna, you had something to add. Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to comment because, of course, there is a lot of things that needs to be done in the production value chain. But then it comes to us as consumers. Then mm. we get lost of this traceability. So I know, uh, I think it's about the value of a certain material. Uh, I know for sure now when, when we're going to produce the fossil-free steel, they want really to trace this fossil free steel also uh, when it's used mm. uh, to take it back because it's very valuable because it's zero emission steel. They don't want to mix it with some other uh, dirty steel. Uh, so I think the problem maybe for, for textiles when it comes out to, us, to our uh, consumer is it's, it's, uh, it gets lost. So here we mm. need a lot of solutions and find ways of really keeping track of the of the textiles mm. in order to to be able to uh, reuse it so i don't know if if you're also thinking about closing the loops also taking back the material for, i mean for for uh, in your your production chain uh, that's the question for Bjorn. <laughs> i just want yeah, to know. or uh, take I mean, ikea i don't know how you're thinking about that sorry for uh, asking yeah. questions no, no, it's a good question <laughs> But I mean, I mean, if you look at at at, uh, at the textile business, I mean, in uh, if I go outside of Birla, we have in in Sweden we have Renewcell, who is actually starting to to start to to get taking back the textiles and and uh, remaking the fiber. But also we in Birla are doing that in in India with uh, with. Uh, 
leave we we have products now that we that we can do and that we are actually uh uh circulating back and and try to do the the circulating back to cotton also in into our process again uh it is uh it is working it's still a lot of challenges involved in it but it it uh, it grows very fast and and uh, it's it's needed we 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 uh, i mean i would say that renew cell is probably the one that's been coming the longest but um there are a lot of other companies behind also trying to pick up on this and, and i mean we are we are supporting renew cell but we're also working on it ourselves to 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 try to get to 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 circulate the used uh textile and especially then cotton though. So I just wanted to comment a little bit back on what you said. And <clears throat> in Sweden, you know, we have these areas where you can recycle. And yes, you can recycle um, your aluminium or cans. And it's a, basically a lot of the, you know, you, your cardboards, your paper, uh, glass. But where is the textile recycle? All you have is these bins where they say you donate these clothes and this goes to a country that needs clothes, which is basically another kind of a textile dump, you know, and, and we're creating more of these. Um, uh, so first of all, that those solutions are not there, you know, from the consumer perspective, that we don't even know where to go and actually think. And that's the problem here. And imagine how we're going to, you know, how do we manage this in the rest of the world? So that was one thing. And the other thing is... Um, I wanted uh, three of you to think if you had a crystal ball today and you would look, you know, we are talking today is India and Sweden 75 years of our in, in the next 25 years. Like, what do you see in, with circularity and, and with imagine that it has scaled up and where, what's the vision, you know, in the next 25 years? And if you had a crystal ball, what would you like to, what's your positive vision of the future? Um, Puneet. We'll start with you. Thank you, Sanju. Uh, I I know about the next 25 years. Let, let me take a shot at the next five years. I'm maybe in a bit of a hurry uh, to reach there. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, today, what we have discussed so far in the past 20 minutes is uh, there, there's a lot of interest, uh, but uh, there's also a lot of uh, different efforts are happening in different compartments. And there are different segmentations, you know. Uh, I think what I'm looking for is a is one view. Uh, today, when we uh, develop for different markets, we see uh, legislations, markets uh, putting different kind of uh, requirements on the on the same materials. While the different customers, uh, the basic needs are same. Uh, everybody wants uh, uh, to live on a good and safe planet. Everybody wants. Uh, uh, safe to use products. Uh, still, uh, different markets pose different legislative challenges, and that that makes it difficult for uh, someone uh, like us who is providing solutions in the form of these products. Uh, so, if if we can have one unified view, wherein um, you know we have to comply uh, with a unified code of requirements, mm. I think that will make the job a lot more easier, uh, both in terms of complying uh, and rather than finding market oriented solutions we we can look for global solutions that can mm. scale up and that will that is what we will really need uh, you know to make sense of these new circular supply chains mm. uh, scale will be really important and that is one way to get there yes beyond Thanks. you'll get the last word yeah i believe i mean i i i, I would not uh, I, I will not use 25 years either i think i think we're much closer than if you look at the at the that what's what's going on and, and I, I believe that we are we are I mean we, we we know there are a lot of companies today that can do uh re research or circulate or re reuse uh, or rework the used textile. I believe that they in, in five years we have come a lot longer and it's getting to be uh a normal use <clears throat> uh, and uh, of course uh, 
there are many companies and we are one of them that works with this and 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 but there are still a lot of cha- challenges involved but we we have the technique and we we know how to do it and and we can see that the customers which i think is uh, together i mean with with all ourselves but the customers are asking for this and that makes it a big push for us also to to take it to the next level uh, so so i believe in 5 years we have a if we would say you sit here in 5 years I, I believe we have a totally different industry mm-hmm. when we talk about uh, uh, circular circular or reuse or rework of of used textiles Thank you, Bjorn. And and now I see the the time is all. Yes. Out. Uh, I think uh, I also would say five years, five to ten years, and I yeah. I think we will see a completely different uh, textile value chain, and there will be a lot of new uh, businesses. It's not just uh, fiber to fiber uh, recycling; it's the whole value chain. Mm. So there will be a lot of business opportunities. There is needed a lot of digital solutions. So I, I would say I, I missed a little bit more connection earlier today uh, because we talked a lot of digitalization mm. and for example, smart cities and these things. But really to connect the digital solutions, uh, uh, sensor technology, mm. AI, and, and really solve this problem, and, and there will be a lot of opportunities. So, so I think really, really positive. So that's what we're trying to do today, is basically break the silos, connect the dots between the different areas. I think this is also a way for new opportunities to come up and, and understand how we need to work together. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we want to keep this discussion on, and we want to continue with this. Three of you represent three very important aspects of the value chain. And Puneet, I'll end with what you said. I mean, I think the need for to create some kind of global standardization, you know, and that companies and organizations like IKEA and Aditya Birlia and IVL, I mean, you all can all um, push the agenda, both on the global level, but also on the national level, for these kind of actions to actually take place. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, and, and uh, thank you to our excellent uh, speakers and contributors.